I am not a historian, but neither are you. So, how about we the people learn this stuff together? Welcome to US 101. And a happy Valentine's Day, everybody. I, I just wanted to let you know that I, I love each and every one of you. Except for, except for you, Jeff. You're a real piece of shit. Uh, did everyone celebrate Abraham Lincoln's birthday this past Sunday? Because I, I sure did. I spent some time on my couch reading some of his speeches and I had a, a Lincoln cupcake or a, or a Lynn cake, as, as some people would call it. <laughs> I, am, I am such a lonely, lonely man. And in honor of Abe's 208th birthday, I wanted to focus on a very specific event that happened in Lincoln's life. No, I'm not talking about the Gettysburg Address. No. I am not talking about his second inaugural address. No, I am not talking about anything to do with the Civil War or his assassination. For today's episode, I'm going to tell you the story about the time Abraham Lincoln was almost in a sword duel. Now, I know that it's common knowledge that Abraham Lincoln was an expert handler with an axe, as evidenced in the historical documentary Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter, a tremendous film, by the way, highly recommended viewing uh, for all high school history classes. But in 1842, Lincoln came super close to slicing his rival James Shields in half with a massive broadsword. So let me tell you how this rumble almost went down. 1842. At the time, a young Abraham Lincoln is a state legislator, while his rival, James Shields, is the state auditor of Illinois. Furthermore, they are on opposite sides of the aisle because Lincoln is a part of the Whig Party and Shields is a member of the Democratic Party. Now, when Shields became auditor, he started siding with some policies that didn't sit too well with Honest Abe. One of those specific policies had to do with the Illinois State Bank, which at the time was going bankrupt, so they decided to let everybody know that they were no longer accepting paper money if you had to pay taxes or any debts. The only type of currency that they would accept would be gold or silver. That is something that Shields was backing. He was behind that. Honest Abe? Not so much. So how did Lincoln decide to strike back at Shields for siding with the bank and not with the working man, not with the farmer, you know, people that didn't just have gold and silver laying around? In the best way he knew how. Satire. Lincoln started writing letters to the Sangamo Journal, which was a paper in Springfield, Illinois, under the pen names of Jeff and Rebecca. And what he would do in those letters is he would basically be calling out Shields' decision making and he would also call out his character. Specifically, one of those letters that he addressed to the paper as Rebecca, he decided to call out Shields' lack of game with the ladies. As Rebecca, he once quoted Shields as saying, Dear girls, it is distressing, but I cannot marry you all. It is not my fault that I am so handsome and so interesting. You know when you're hanging out with your friends, right? And you've always got that one friend in the group that's always talking talking about, oh, I'm always with girls and I'm always getting laid and I always got the ladies hanging around me and you finally call them out on their bullshit because you never see them hanging out with girls ever? That's basically what Lincoln did here. So Shields, who for the most part is liked by the community, but he starts seeing all these satirical letters pop up in papers and how people are laughing at him now because of these letters, he gets pissed, naturally, and he goes to the paper, he goes to the editor, and he goes, I demand to know who the hell this Rebecca person is. And the editor just straight up tells him, Rebecca? Oh, no, man, <laughs> that's just a pen name. That's, that's Abe Lincoln writing all that stuff about you, man. So now that Shields knows that Rebecca is Lincoln, he gets even more pissed off and demands that Lincoln retracts all the letters, all the statements that he's made about his character which Lincoln does not want to do. So naturally, Shields does the next best logical step. He challenges Lincoln to a duel, which Lincoln accepts because if you back down from a duel, that was kind of a stain on your honor. So Lincoln was like, all right, I'm down. And here's the thing, because Shields was the one that issued the challenge, that meant that Lincoln got the privilege of selecting the weapons for the duel and the conditions under which the duel would take place. Now, as I'm sure we all know by now, with the help of the Hamilton soundtrack, most duels were fought with pistols. The two men went to the field of honor, they stood back to back, walked 10 paces, turn and fire. But Lincoln did not want to use guns, but not because he didn't like them. According to Lincoln, he wrote, quote, I didn't want the damned fellow to kill me, which I think he would have done if we had selected pistols, end quote. So which weapon did Lincoln decide to go with instead? 
the cavalry broadsword. As for the conditions of the duel, Lincoln stipulated that, okay, they would fight with swords, but they would also fight with a plank in between them that was about 10 feet long and about 9 to 12 inches wide. And the reason for that plank was to make sure that no man could step over it. It was basically like a line in the sand, so to speak. But why the distance between Lincoln and Shields? And for that matter, why did Lincoln pick swords? For that, we go to the tail of the tape. Alright, first up, you've got Abraham Lincoln, man, aka a honest Abe. And in this fight, the numbers are going to give him the match. I mean, he's standing at a staggering six foot four, which gives him a wide wingspan, which means he's got the size and the reach advantage in this potential duel to the death. And on the other side, you've got the feisty auditor from Illinois, James No Game Shields. Unfortunately, the height advantage not skewing in his favor as he's only standing at a diminutive five foot nine. Those stubby little arms can't possibly reach the lanky Lincoln. But you know what? He's got the spirit, so don't count him out of this one yet. The duel was set to take place on September 22nd, 1842 in Missouri, where the act of dueling was still legal, on a sandbar in the Mississippi River known as Bloody Island. The two men made their way to the field of honor, ready to take each other on, broadswords at the hip, and at one point, to kind of shake Shields' confidence a little bit, Lincoln unsheathes his broadsword, and to show off his length and his strength, he casually reaches up and slices a branch off of a tree, just to show what Shields is up against. But Shields did not break at that display, man. He was still ready to throw down, so the moment had finally arrived, the moment of truth. Combatants staring each other down, hands at the ready at the hilts, heightened senses, adrenaline pumping through their veins, ready to take out one or the other. And just as they're about to draw their swords and fight, it didn't happen. Why? Because Colonel John J. Harden stepped in at the last minute, begging the two men to come to a truce, figure out a way to compromise and just get over this nonsense. And they did. Anticlimactic, I know. No fight. All that build up and no blood was drawn. Not a drop. I know. It's not, it's not the ending you're looking for, right? It's not the ending I was looking for. I was hoping that Lincoln was going to slice that little in half. But look at it this way. It could have been a lot worse, right? I mean, what if Shields had killed Lincoln? Then what would have happened? Well, for starters, Stephen A. Douglas might have become president instead of Lincoln. And since Stephen A. Douglas was actually a proponent, he liked slavery. He didn't mind slavery so much. So because of that, there might not have been a civil war because slavery would have still been an ongoing institution. Although, to be honest with you, Lincoln didn't really like people knowing about the fact that he had almost engaged in a duel with swords. As a matter of fact, when he was president, an army officer walked up to him one time and asked him, did this really happen? Did you almost really fight a guy with swords? And Lincoln replied, quote, I do not deny it, but if you desire my friendship, you will never mention it again, end quote. And so, we won't. And so I hope all of you will join me in wishing President Abraham Lincoln a happy belated 208th birthday. Sir, here is to your memory, to your honor, and to your legacy. You will never be forgotten. Relax, it's just, it's just grape juice. With a ton of alcohol in it. And that is it for this episode of US 101, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out. And again, thank you to all of you that have found the channel and have been subscribing to the channel. Guys, I cannot thank you enough. Hopefully all of you guys are checking out the rest of the videos on the channel and becoming burgeoning history buffs, man. I love making these videos and I hope you enjoy watching. Them. And as always, guys, make sure to check out our Facebook page, facebook.com slash USA History 101. And uh, if you could also do me a favor, check this video out over here. I did a collaborative video recently recently with a Hip Hughes History. He's another YouTube historian, a high school history teacher. He's awesome at what he does. We recently did a video together on uh, the history of the St. Valentine's Day Massacre, which happened in 1929 right here in Chicago, Illinois. It's a bloodbath. Bullets, gangsters dying, one guy not dying until three hours later even though his body is riddled with lead. It's a, it's a, it's a great story. Highly recommend you check it out. And on that note, guys, I will see you next Tuesday for another episode of US 101. Until then, we are all done. I'm going to go this way. Happy birthday, Mr. Lincoln. And I'm actually going to go get another Lincoln cupcake because those are delicious.